it appears like as I've mentioned previously here, you know, I'm obviously pining. I think most people, most people in the dance music scene, most people that are fans of going out, nightlife and all that good stuff and festivals are actually pining to go out in some way, shape or form in a very next, in a very immediate future, especially with the vaccine on the way. But I was, I was sort of wondering in a previous podcast why there wasn't enough, there wasn't, uh, there wasn't a lot of excitement or a lot of movement um, on in my inbox mostly, especially in my promotions tab where I usually get um, uh, most of the information regarding festivals and parties and things going on because I'm signed up to a million uh, mailing list. I didn't see any movement um, as soon as the and that was announced that Pfizer obviously has successfully um, developed a vaccine for COVID-19. You would assume off the back of that news, a lot of promoters and event managers and whatever organizers would be racing to alert everybody of the fact and to organize pre-sale of tickets for events you know scheduled for next year now it could be because everyone's sort of like tv seeing it and waiting for it to be actually confirmed and for more people to um you know to be vaccinated and maybe for some things to change whatever it may be but you still feel that a lot of promoters would want to jump the gun just to make sure that they kind of are sort of like first in our mind again kind of reminding everybody they're still alive because you know they haven't really been communicating with us in a meaningful way or we haven't been paying attention to a lot of these party promoters and organizers for the best part of a year so they probably want to kind of like hey um we're not i don't want to be outside of our mind remember you remember me but that didn't happen and it got me thinking and then i saw this news on mix mag that was like oh this is not looking good and it's definitely um has a lot of parallels to the original news that i keep mentioning on here of that variety magazine article where the dude sort of said hey don't expect events to come back i think it was a former you know music executive who said hey don't expect events to come back until 2022 and he was saying that in march of this year right he was saying don't expect anything until another year and a half or two years so crazy so it says the following this is mix mac glassenbury may be prevented from going ahead in 2021 warn mps so and this is Glastonbury right this is one of our premier festivals here in the UK if not the premier festival um and if Glastonbury can't go on then don't expect you know love box or f you know what's the other one I went to junction two and these kind of things to happen it's not gonna it's not gonna work so it says here MPs have warned that major UK festivals such as Glastonbury may be prevented from taking place in 2021 unless their insurance is underwritten due to COVID-19 which definitely goes back to what that guy said earlier uh, in the previous sorry article for Variety where he said um, the main issue is going to be the insurance companies right not being able to put policies in place in time or not willing to take the responsibility for putting on an event underwriting and someone getting ill it continues speaking in the house of commons julian knight a conservative chairman of the digital cultural uh, media and sports committee said the uk is a leader in the world in terms of music and arts and festivals the sector is worth more than 12 billion dollars or 12, yeah well, more than 12 billion pounds i didn't know that uh supports many thousands of highly skilled jobs as well as the financial lifeblood of the nation's musicians however there will be no festival season next year unless insurance is underwritten in the case of COVID disruption. Will the ministers firstly meet with me and the MPs from across this house to see how this reinsurance, uh, to see how this reinsurance can be put in place? And does the minister recognise nothing? Um, noting her answer to the previous question that with a minimum lead time of six months, right, the insurance reinsurance rate needs to be in place now before the likes of Glastonbury commit. So that's something I also I didn't really think about, right? That a lot of these festivals need to have six months lead up time, right, in order to make it work, which explains why a lot of those festivals prior were getting cancelled like in like May, right? Sometimes, you know, sometimes April prior, right? That were happening later in the year because they needed lead up time to I was I don't know, get things in place, organize whatever or confirm and book people. Um so it's not something that can be turned around in the space of a couple of months. They need some time to get it going, especially now with the disruptions to um what do they call it they call it something the disruptions to the supply chain right of course with this perfect with this prolonged period of time that we've been out um they need to get that going again so it's going to be a lot of work so it continues cultural minister caroline um dinner gang or dinner j dinner gay how you pronounce that dinner gay dinner j how you pronounce that um she says festivals are such a vibrant and integral part of our career community and our economy and i'm well aware that many will take decisions very soon about whether they can go ahead next year so it's a very urgent situation so again aware but let's see the answer there's a subgroup of my entertainment and events working group looking very specifically about how we can get festivals reopened and in the last few weeks i've met with representatives from festivals in edinburgh and 
only yesterday with festivals in the Isle of Wight. Okay, good to know, but let's get to an answer. She's doing that politician thing. Um, backbench MP Theresa Vella said, will the minister give serious consideration to the government support for an interdementary or insurance scheme so that we can still make these decisions in the confidence that if there is a third wave, then their losses are going to be mitigated? And Caroline said, I'm well aware of the concerns or the challenges securing insurance for live events. It's something we're looking at very carefully, but the key really is for the industry is to build an evidence base that absolutely demonstrates insurance coverage is only the barrier the events taking place. So that's fair. She's basically saying we need to make sure um, that the insurance is the only issue and not the actual safety of the punters. Now that goes to another issue that we're having at the moment that Sasha Lord, um, the Knights South of Manchester and Andy Burnham, the mayor for Manchester are really kind of pushing to the forefront where they're essentially arguing online and you know, I've most have seen on social where they're basically arguing with the people at Sage who are responsible for kind of putting together our COVID action plan that the you know the policy or yeah or the incent the policy that I basically put in place to close certain bars and pubs and restaurants at a certain time 10 p.m curfew had no scientific basis right the idea that most of the hospitality venues were closed for a prolonged period of time well when we were going through you know some of the you know rising cases in the beginning or during our second lockdown there was no reason why these bars and pubs should have been closed because of the evidence so far that we've gathered through tracking and tracing and all that sort of good stuff has indicated that hospitality industry only contributes i think to like five percent of the overall cases um during covid right so the actual idea that you'd get covid from sitting in the bar and hanging out with your friends isn't necessarily true and it could be said really argued that most bars and pubs are kind of taking as many steps as many precautions are necessary to make sure that they're covid secure make sure that they're clean and hygienic right they already have to do that prior in order to make sure that they're allowed to open but especially in this climate no bar restaurant's going to take any chances right they're going to make sure that they you know uh, clean and prepare their place as best as they can so that no one contracts a virus because you would assume if someone contracts it in a restaurant or a bar it's probably going to be curtains for them in terms of reputation so it will be nice to get an idea as to what goes, what happens going forward. Again, it's not looking good if they're already talking about Glastonbury potentially being cancelled next year. That might mean we'll see a whole slew of cancellations again in the new year, which will be a great way to celebrate 2022, 2021. Sorry. Um, but again, it is looking more than likely that that guy, I think it was a Coachella dude um, who I mentioned in, the, in you know a couple of podcast prior he said already from march of this year he said don't expect any events next year and he, and he was saying this without even the knowledge of knowing there's a vaccine around the corner um he was always under the impression that we'd go back to events in late or in early sorry 2022 so a long time to wait to get back into a rave unfortunately what can you do what can you do